Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. Tonight, we have season three, episode two of Ready to Love. Now the last episode, we were able to find out a little bit about the cast, but in this episode, they meet each other. First impressions are everything. I give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side. Then I give my discussion questions at the end. No need to dig around. I placed all of the mini marks down below. That's all coming up next. We are introduced to Joy and Kelfani meeting for the very first time. And Joy's energy is just so infectious. Her smile, her hair, everything about her. And Kelfani is very nice and meeting her and telling her, how are you doing? They get to know each other briefly, talking about what they do as a career. And he's saying, hey, you know, I'm a bodybuilder professionally. And she jokes around and says, I can tell, Grant, looking at his muscles and his physique. But as soon as they get something going there with the energy and getting to know somebody, we have handsome Edwin that comes up with his nice suit and his sunglasses. And he says, hey, what's up, man? And hey, how are you doing? To joy and very, very demanding presence. And Calvani takes note of that. You could tell that he senses that other male presence. And he's like, wow, look at this guy in this suit. And I'm here in a t-shirt and jeans and he's not as bold as he was before with speaking to Joy. Everybody starts to slowly trickle in. We have Denise, David, Winter, and Denise makes it known that she is very attracted to David. And David makes it very well known that he's there ready, looking for love, and he's ready to have a good time. We then see that Joyce and Chris, you know, they say, hey, I know you, and what's going on? They're friends. So, you know, they all automatically say, well, you know, we know there's not going to be anything between us because, you know, we're friends. We know each other. You know, we kick it and everything like that. How about we just look out for each other and we give each other little pointers here and there if we hear or see anything too crazy. Adriana makes her debut and she walks up and one of the things that she says while talking to production is that I noticed while walking up I'm one of the youngest women here and I think that no I know the other women that are here are older than me and I could see the side eyes but hey I'm here and I can't help it that I'm younger than everybody else I'm here looking for love like everybody else. The host Tommy Miles arrives and says hi to everybody as they're mingling and getting to know one another and he says hey I know that we're all having fun and we're starting small talk but let me just remind everybody that we are at this resort because the main focus is to keep you away from any of the distractions so your main focus is to get to know each and every person to take your time try to talk to everybody and as much as you can to get all of the details that you can also make it known about your likes and your dislikes any details that you can think of because before the end of this night is over we have to eliminate one girl and one guy and unfortunately you guys have to go home but in the end there will be a remaining six we will only have so many couples towards the end to really focus on so take everything seriously and with that being said everybody come on in and let's mingle Everybody's starting to talk and chill out and relax. And Winter says to Edwin, well, I know what I'm going to do. I need to sit down and take my shoes off because my feet hurt. And Edwin, being the gentleman that he is, bends down and starts to take off her shoes and says, well, let me help you with that. I know that your feet are probably hurting, baby. Okay. And oh my goodness, this next scene between Rashid and Denise. So before Rashid could even open his mouth and make small talk with her, Denise notices that there's a bug in her drink. So as a way to break the ice and kind of laugh a little bit, he says, oh, don't worry about that. You can drink and, you know, all the alcohol will kill, kill that thing off. Don't worry about it. And then he says, no, 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 I, I need to get me another drink. And there's a slight pause. And he's like, okay. 
And she walks off with like kind of like this this quick walk off and she goes to get a drink. And as she goes to get her drink, she's making remarks like, I guess I'll get my own drink. Let me let me get my own drink. Hi, y'all. How y'all doing? Oh, nice to meet you. Mm hmm. And she gets her drink and comes back to where Rashid is standing. And she says, oh, so what's your name again? And he's like, oh, that's not good. You, you already forgetting my name. Oh, man. And he's like, my name is Rashid. And then he says, oh, OK, that's 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 nice. And on the production clip, Denise says, well, I think Rashid came out very cocky. You know, it was just something. It was just something about him. So Rashid tries to make small talk again and asks her what she does for a living. And she says, well, you know, I, I, I'm a coach with track and field. And he's like, oh, OK, that's great. You know, well, where'd you go to school? She says, I went to Grambling. He jokes and laughs about it. Said, oh, that's great. You know, both HBCU. But, you know, we 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 never had an opportunity to lose against y'all. You know, we beat y'all all the time. I went to Alabama A&M. And Denise is very snappy and says, well, I know we beat your girls, though. I know we did. And it's just this awkward kind of like competitive energy that she's giving out. And he's just like, well, yeah, but I don't know if you guys did, but, you know, OK. It's just a very awkward situation. It's just like, yikes. And Rashi says, well, you know what? Let me refresh your drink because she's already gulped down that one. And he goes to get her a drink and comes back. And as he's trying to give her the glass, she's really not feeling them anymore and trying to walk away. And he's trying to hand her the glass. And she's trying very hard not to give him eye contact. But she still takes the drink. And it's just this really bad, very awkward encounter that they had. And Chris, 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 oh, I didn't think there was enough room for himself and his, his ego and everybody else. But he's telling production, you know, I'm just just really ready for love and I'm really, really just having fun. And I know I won't be one of the first ones sent home because, you know, look at this smile and listen to my voice. You know, just I have I, I don't have any expectations of going home anytime soon. Naya and Chris take a little moment to chit chat and she says, well, you know, I'm sorry I didn't just walk over there to talk to you, but I'm old fashioned. I'm kind of used to, you know, men approaching me or any other woman and making conversation. And it's really awkward for me to just walk up to a guy and just start talking. And he's like, oh, you're old school. I love that. So they really have a moment where they're really talking and how he loves to be in the water and connect with the earth. And they both believe that those connections are really important. They're loving that they're barefoot at the moment while they're speaking and feeling the grass. So you really, really feel like they're having some sort of connection and they're feeling each other. So we might have to keep an eye out for those two. Rashid and Simone talk and she asks him what he does for a living and he tells her that he's a luxury car broker and she's like oh okay so you sell fancy cars and stuff and he's like yeah but she asked him that in kind of this condescending tone not really oh that's me what what else do you do it's this I'm looking down um, at you you know over my glasses in this despicable way like oh what else do you have to offer and she says in her production clip that she's looking for a guy that's financially stable she doesn't care if he's just has good looks and muscles and all this if he's not financially stable she's over it it's not something that she's interested in and it's also interesting that as she continues to mingle with different men she asks over and over again do you have a passport do you have a passport do you have a passport or so you could get up and leave at this moment right now so it's just it comes off as abrasive and it really, really is kind of pushing the guys away. As Adriana is talking with other people, she sees Rashid from across the room. And she makes a production note that, wow, I know that guy. A while back, you know, we used to talk a little bit. We were getting to know each other. But it was just awkward, and I ghosted him. I know I was wrong, and I shouldn't have done it, but that's how it went down. He was just coming out of a divorce, and I was coming out of a serious relationship, and it was just awkward, so I really ghosted him. She goes to Rashid and says, hey, and it's this awkward, oh, hey, how are you? And it's this weird hug, like, I know you, but it's under weird circumstances, and they try to give a nice little hee hee hee. And she says, well, hey, I, I, I see that you're talking, but let's catch up later and let's just discuss some things. But I'll go ahead and let you keep talking with other people. I just wanted to say hi. 
Then we have Sam. Now, in my first review, I said that he might come off as socially awkward because he seemed like he was just mentally somewhere else. And unfortunately, I was right. He's standing off to the side while everybody else is mingling and talking. And he's thinking out loud, which is making him look like he's talking to himself. Oh, yeah, she's talking to him. Oh, yeah, they're hitting it off. And it's just really, really weird. I'm at home like, oh, boy. Or Sam, like, try to talk to somebody, dude. I mean, come on, at least make the first impression good. But it's just weird, and he's just kind of standoffish, and you can tell he's just trying to fight with everything in him to talk to somebody. Denise and Calfani have a nice little sit down, and Denise wastes no time to put her legs up on his thighs, make herself very comfortable. And she is definitely an alpha woman, okay? She's making it known that, look, my feet hurt, my legs hurt, and I'm going to use your legs and thighs as something to rest them upon, okay? But it's obvious that Kalfani doesn't mind because he's getting comfortable and he's making sure that she's comfortable. And he wants to know a little bit more about her. And she explains that unfortunately in her past relationship she was in an abusive relationship and it got so bad that it almost cost her her life but he loves her energy she loves his energy and they keep having this moment of talking and Kelfani says to production that he's really really interested in getting to know her and he also tells her you have this rough exterior, but something tells me you have a really soft inside. You're a really soft person. She says, yeah, you know, I do have this rough exterior, but I, I, I really am a softie. So it was good to hear that about her in that moment. Raymond makes his rounds to everybody. And when he gets to talking, he has to pretty much let the cat out of the bag that he has five kids and he's a musician and he really hates saying that. He says that he really doesn't like saying that because when the moment he says that he's a musician, people automatically assume that he sleeps around. But it's kind of hard not to detail that information because as he's speaking with everybody, he makes it very well known that he plays the guitar and he plays for some artists that uh, maybe you heard of, Genuine, Tank, and he's saying it to everybody. And I, I guess he thought he was just going to get this really big reaction, but it was just the opposite. The women were just like, ooh, you musician, you got five kids, that's a lot going on. And he's coming off as very annoying. And he's just saying it like it's just like, hey, I used to play the guitar for Tank and Genuine. As if they were just supposed to just lie down and open their legs. But okay, okay, Raymond. Denise and Anthony have a little chit-chat. And once again, her legs and feet are over the lap of somebody else. And Anthony, you know, can't help himself, I guess, just to rub her feet. Because she's motioning in a way that, hey, my feet are in, in your lap. So do what you do. And they have a little chit chat and Anthony's like, oh, this is great. We're getting to know everybody and I would love to talk to you. And if I knew you outside of this Weaver probably day, but I would not, you know, be rubbing your feet. So it's kind of like this little hint, like, <laughs> all right, I'm doing this because I'm being nice. Sam once again tries to connect with somebody or talk to somebody. We could tell by the look on Alex's face that she's extremely bored. And she also mentions to production that she's bored out of her mind. And he just rambles on and on and on and on and on, and on to the to the hot, the what, the popcorn. He's just talking about all kinds of stuff. You know, he's just pulling stuff out of his brain just to, just to say something. But it's just, it's making all of the women feel very uncomfortable even though all of the other women seem to be kind of like eh, about Raymond he sits down and has a little talk with Adriana and she says hey well you know I'm really open to in the future I really want to have three sons and it's just something that I really want and Raymond is just impressed because all of the other women when they heard about that he was a musician and that he had the kids they really were kind of dampered with the conversation but she was just really into him and telling him that he was nice and that she liked the vibes but as they were talking Rashid politely says hey you know I hate to break this up but I really didn't get a chance to speak with her do you mind if you know to take a little break and I could speak with her and he's just like oh no man go ahead so they sit down and 
Rashid explains to Adriana like, hey, okay, so we got to talk about, you know, in the past when we were kind of talking and, you know, then you stopped talking to me. I just want to speak you know, for me and say at that moment, it was just so much going on in my life. I just got out of a divorce, but I have a son and my main focus was just making sure that he was able to adjust to everything and that he could understand what was going on. And then at the same time, my brain was just somewhere else. And she says, oh, you know, I'm glad you told me that. And then, you know, basically the reason why I ghosted you is because you never communicated that to me, that that's what, what was going on in your head. And I felt that I was the only one trying to make some sort of initiative to get to know you. So I just ghosted you. So it was just this moment of them being honest, which I could appreciate. And she says, well, despite everything in the past, I really, really want to get to know you. And I think we should just start over from scratch and go from there. And Rashid is really, really excited about that because he really wants to get to know her now. This next scene, y'all had me rolling 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 on the couch laughing oh i was laughing so hard so we have david now if you guys watched the first review i was really feeling david because you know i'm a country girl and he's super country and i was just loving everything about him. you know he seemed like he really kept it real so i'm like oh my goodness like david is about to sit down with simone how is this conversation about to go down and oh was i right so they're sitting down and he's trying to make small talk with her but once again she has this kind of lawyer energy of kind of like, you know, asking 50 questions instead of just trying to just talk. And he says, oh, you know, it was just nice just meeting everybody. And how are you getting along with everybody? And she's like, oh, you know, do you travel? He's like, yeah, you know, I, I travel, but I need to do a little bit more. But the next place that I really want to go is the DR, you know, the Dominican Republic. And she's like, oh, well, what are you going to do there? You know, you going to get some hoes? He's like, what? She said, you know, you're going to get some hoes, some prostitutes. He's looking at her like, that's not funny. Like, why are you asking me that? And she's like, oh, you know, I used to live in the DR, so I know what people want. And he looked at her like, oh, okay, is that what they thought you were? <laughs> and I'm at home like, get a day get her but he's just like hey you know she's like no no what are you talking about he's just like look i had to get you back you know i had to say something snappy back because you're over there talking about am i looking for hoes and prostitutes like no you know so it was just this moment like clearly clearly this is not the love connection between these two because they started off all on the wrong foot i mean they started off like <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, it was hilarious because these two right here just it just clashed. It just it just didn't work. Tommy starts to sit down with a few of the guys here and there and he's talking to Jay and Rashid and he wants to just see how they're feeling and Jay is just saying, you know, I'm really, really feeling joy. I love her energy, her smile, her hair. We just we just connect and Rashid is really loving Simone because she has no filter and he thinks that's just awesome that she could just say what she wants and she means what she says and she's also very pretty and he's also feeling Adriana because of course what we saw earlier he really really wants to see hey what could have been and then he says we well, you know Tommy wants to know okay who are you not feeling and Rashid isn't feeling Denise at all because he felt that she was just just really abrasive Tommy wants to get the inside scoop with some of the ladies and Naya's really feeling Chris Simone is feeling Rashid and Winter is feeling Edwin. I mean, who wouldn't feel Edwin? I mean, come on now. And um, we also have that Simone isn't feeling Raymond and Naya. She's not feeling him either. She's not feeling Sam. Califani is really feeling Denise. Sam is feeling Alex and Edwin is feeling Joy. We also have Anthony is really digging winter and you know Tommy wants to talk to a lot of the other guys just to say hey you know don't be afraid to just say how you feel but what what are some of your thoughts with some of the other ladies all the guys agree unfortunately that Danny she seems to be more of a home girl you know somebody they could just kick it with they are seeing her in a romantic way and a lot of the guys are saying the same thing about Denise that she comes off very, very abrasive and very harsh so it's just this big turnoff 
And David makes it very, very well known that, hey, Simone, she's beautiful. She's got those beautiful eyes. I love her hair. But her conversation is trash. <laughs> now, I'm from Texas. I'm from Texas. So that's like the ultimate boo. It said, oh, good. How was your food? It was trash. Oh, that movie. Did you like it? It was trash. Oh, did you like it? It was trash. When you say trash, you're done. Like you're completely done. When he had, when he said trash, I was like, he's just, he want everybody to know. Look, you asking me, Tommy, about Simone. It was, it, it was the conversation was trash. I ain't like it. He, he was like, look, you want to know everybody about everybody else? I'm telling you about Simone. She was trash. <laughs> More of the guys chime in about Simone. But Raymond says, you know, hey, I felt the same way. She was just asking me all these questions. It's just really, really harsh. I felt like I was, you know, a detective was asking me all these questions and I was in trouble or something. But he says, hey, when I found out that she was a lawyer, I was like, oh, it makes sense. You know, she's just used to doing that in her everyday life. So I didn't take it personally. I just took it as that's just the way she is at work. And it's coming off in her the way she talks with people. So he really didn't have this offended kind of energy when it came to Simone. We learned that Denise is just loving some Kalani and so is Alicia. She loves her some Kalani because everybody's just like, oh, you know, he's just tall. He's just dark and muscular and he's just wonderful. And Joy is feeling Edwin and Jay. So she's really digging those two. And Sam, unfortunately, when Tommy talked to all of the women, they were the ones that just like, hey, when it came to Sam, I just wasn't feeling this connection. I really couldn't pick up how he was feeling or how he was doing. I just, uh, so the ladies are kind of agreeing that Sam is just, he just wasn't it. They couldn't figure out how to pop the top. So we get to the point when Tommy gathers everybody around. It's later in the evening. It's at night. And he's saying, hey, unfortunately, now it is time for eliminations. One guy, one girl has to go home. And we're talking to all of the ladies. The ladies had to pick their top two of men up for elimination. And those top two gentlemen were Sam and Raymond. And unfortunately, out of those two, they had to pick one that had to go home. And the person that has to go home is Sam. So Sam is eliminated. Z, 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 as my girl Nicki Minaj would say. Now it's time for the eliminations for the women. And out of all the men, the men picked the top two as ones they weren't feeling, the ones that should have been eliminated, and that was Simone and Danny. And out of those two, they had to pick one to be eliminated and to go home, and that was Danny. That ended episode two, and we're waiting for the next one. Okay, so if you guys watched the first episode where they were meeting the cast and his first impressions, I was pretty much right. Like watching this episode, I was like, oh my goodness, I was right about that. I was right about that. It's so much that you can tell about certain people. I don't know if that's just the South side of me, but a lot of stuff I was just like, mm, it's not going to work. I called Sam. I was like, Sam just seems like he's just not here. It's just something about him. I don't think he's going to make it past the episode. And I was so correct. Also about Simone. I was correct about those observations that unfortunately her being a lawyer, that's going to co-mingle with the way that she talks to people. Now, she did acknowledge it in the first episode. I really have a bad habit of speaking to people like I'm interrogating them instead of just having a good time and talking. That's so understandable. And I don't hold that against her. That's probably just something that she has to work on because it's her profession. And you have to have this presence when you're a lawyer to get the answers that you need, right? So hopefully we can see her loosen up a little bit, but I just thought it was comical that when they called out her name <laughs> as the top two to go home, she was just looking like, I know they didn't say my name. Did they say Simone? <laughs> I peeped that, but you know, she knew she was on camera. So she tried to hold her composure. Cause it was like, Oh, Simone. She was just like, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Who did y'all think was going to go home? I thought Raymond was going to go. It was, it, I thought the top two, believe it or not, I thought the top two were going to be Sam and Chris. I know, I know, look, okay, hear me out. I know Chris 
is beautiful and he's a great guy, but it's just like, he's just certain things that he says. I'm just like, oh, you're so annoying. Cause you're just like my smile and my suit with no shirt. It's just kind of, uh, that's just me. I really, really thought that it was going to be uh, Raymond because he was super annoying and he just came off as just super, just like, nobody cares that you play for Tank and Genuine. Like, come to Texas, everybody's beautiful here. Like, you know, I was just, it didn't, it didn't phase me. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, who did you think was gonna go home first? And wow, let me know if it's just me. What if you went on a show or something where you have, you talking to all these guys and how would you feel if you were the top two to be sent home? What if nobody was feeling you? Like that would just, I would have to seek counseling after that. Like, man, all these men that I talked to tonight, none of them was feeling me. As soon as they would have called my name, Shannon, that's my birth name, but my family calls me Bunny. Y'all know that. But you know, the new subscribers, new people watching, they would have called my name. I'm, I would have been like, nobody, nobody likes me. I would have been like, well, Time to go home and kill myself. Okay, I'll see y'all. Bye. Like, how do you go? How do you go home after they like all these people here and nobody was feeling me? How embarrassing is that? I would have deleted everything. I would have if I had any social media. If I had, I would have got my number changed. People would have came to my door. Hey, girl, how you doing the show? I don't live here no more. Child, my life would have been done. Like. I must be terrible. Wasn't nobody feeling me like that? I would, everybody left with so much grace. Oh, good luck, fine love. I would have been like, really? There ain't nobody, don't none of y'all want to take me to on a date and that? Oh no, I would have been, uh, they, I would have been a fool. I would I would have, I would have went viral, okay? Not because I think I'm the bomb.com, but dang, out of all y'all, didn't none of y'all like me? Anyway. <laughs> That would have messed me up. Like, all those beautiful black men and y'all fine too? Dang. Whew. That would have messed me up. Okay, so who do y'all think is next? <laughs> also, if you were on the show, I, I asked the ladies. Ladies, if you were on the show, who would who were you feeling? Who were you digging? Men, if you were on the show, who out of the ladies, who were you feeling? Who were you digging? I'm really digging David. I just hope that he don't mess it up and say something stupid and I regret saying this. But I'm really digging David. I'm really digging Edwin. Edwin just seems like he's just, his his heart is just so open. He is so open. All he does is work and cook and he just said, I'll work my fingers down to the bone. Mm -hmm. The final you should know. He look like he just want to get down and start singing you a song. I'd be like, <laughs> Oh, you can sing. <laughs> he just seemed like he's just so ready. But the only con to me was that uh, he was in Afghanistan for a real long time. And if we hugging or something, like, are you going to you know, think I'm trying to kill you or something like that and break my neck or something? Like, that would freak me out. I, I, I've, never, I've never dated or been with anyone that served. But when you see death and war, that, that's another part of the brain where I'm just like, I don't know, but Edwin, you cute, David, you 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 cute. Man, I'm, I'm from Texas, so maybe I see, I, since I see the Texas in him, I'm attracted to that because I love his energy and I love his humor. So it definitely would be Edwin, uh, David, to me. I could not listen, listen, listen. I could not be at a resort with that many men. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not. Be at a resort with that many that many men um, that look good like that. I'm lonely. I'm trying to find real love and everything. Like, uh-uh. I couldn't. I. That's just so much. Just that's just so much temptation. Like, okay, let me move on. Um, <laughs> but who do you think should go home next? I definitely think Shay. And uh, what's his name? Curtis, Shay, Curtis, or Raymond. They are like my top three to go home next. Shay was unforgettable in every way. You forgot who she was, didn't you? She was unforgettable. I was like, she's sitting here talking about who she wasn't feeling. Girl, I forgot about you. 
Anyway, <laughs> the show is really entertaining. I cannot wait until the next episode with that many people at a resort. Hormones are going crazy. They looking for love. They away from their kids. They getting a break. You know what I'm saying? They getting catering every day. They by the pool. Come on now. Come on now. Got to keep that window closed. Got to make sure the, the, the coochie crook don't come in. I'll be like, let me unlock this window just in case. <laughs> it's open. <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> let me know what you thought, you guys. I thought the show was fun. I just wished like I had 10 people over my house watching this so we could have a little kiki kiki kiki, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't drink, so I'd be drinking juice and eating snacks and stuff. You know, how, you know, saying how, how I felt about the show. I just hate I was watching it, you know, by myself. I was like, mm. But anyway, <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all thought. Put your comments below. Please share the word about this channel. We are almost up to a thousand, you guys. It's been amazing. Please spread the word. This is a family friendly channel. You know that there's not going to be any vulgarity or harsh language or anything like that it's all about fun and having a little kiki key we talk about everything all right so share the word uh, about this channel follow me on instagram let me know what you thought about the show are you digging it are you not digging it you like bunny i'm not feeling this show i'm gonna wait on the next one let me know and we can talk about it make sure to please respect each other in the comments it's okay to agree to disagree and remember to stay safe and precautious about COVID-19 but not fearful okay hang in there guys if you haven't voted yet please vote um not telling you who to vote vote for but just use your voice and vote okay you guys stay safe I love you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you tomorrow for the season debut for Iyanla Fix My Life. It is season seven. I will be recapping and discussing that because we do need to talk about more things dealing with mental health, communication, unlearning, and so much more. Until next time, I'll see you. Bye. <laughs>